Hello, listeners. If you've enjoyed these narrations, please click on that like and subscribe button. Hello. I'm writing this as a last cry for help. I'm trapped inside the ventilation system of school, together with something, something horrific, the stuff of nightmares. I'm afraid I won't be able to survive. To give some context, I've recently got a job as a night guard at the school in my town. When I saw the job offering online, I couldn't help but apply. I had just moved out of country, and I needed some quick money. Don't judge me. If I knew what I was getting into, I would have never accepted. The paycheck was really good. $60 an hour, and being a college student in need of money, I didn't think much about it. It was a big mistake, though. I called the number posted on the website, and a man with a low, raspy voice answered. H Hello? Hi, this is Jack. I'm calling about the job advertisement, the, uh, night guard one? He paused for a second, and then answered. Yeah, I'll fill you with all the details when you get the address. Meet me here tonight at 8pm. Okay, sure. And that's how the conversation went. Jack didn't ask me any questions as why I wanted the job or even what my skills were. It seemed like he just needed someone to take the post. A quick money, right? Is my thought. I ate a pizza for lunch and then got into my car and drove to the school. When I arrived, I saw a big SUV parked in front of the entrance. Inside, a man in his 50s wearing casual clothes was smoking a cigar. My gut feeling told me that this was Jack. So I got out of my car and waved at him. He immediately noticed me and opened his rear window. Hey, are you the guy that called about this job? Yeah, that's me. Good. I need to ask you a few questions before we proceed. Sure, go ahead. I replied. Can you defend yourself in case someone breaks in and threatens you? He asked in a face-past manner. Um, yes I can. I... He didn't let me finish my sentence. He looked like he was in a hurry. Fine. Do you get scared easily? Do I get scared easily? By what? I didn't want to annoy him, so I just said no. Do you believe in God? Do I believe in God? This is getting a little bit weird, I thought. Maybe I should search for something else. But then I remembered the paycheck. So I told Jack, Yes, yes I do, sir. He waited for a while before any sort of reaction, like he was thinking about something. Fine. You're accepted. That's it? I thought to myself. No more questions? Nothing? Well then. Jack looked straight at me, piercing me with his eyes. You should start working tonight. You have everything you need in the security office inside the school, including your uniform and some tools which might come in handy. Your shift starts at 10 p.m., do you have any questions? You can call me. No one else, do you understand? I quickly replied. Yes, I understand. Then Jack gave me his phone number and drove off, leaving me to my duties. I went inside and I could notice the classic interior the school had. It gave me a lot of 80 vibes, from the look of it. Splendid, I thought. I walked around a long hallway, filled with classrooms on the left side, until I arrived at the security office. I grabbed the doorknob and rushed inside, as I didn't want to be unprepared for my shift. I checked the locker, and it had a uniform, a flashlight, and a wristwatch. I quickly grabbed all of them and put on my uniform in the watch. Then I started at the desk. On it had a document which listed my duties as the night guard. The usual stuff. I quickly read through it and didn't notice anything interesting. But on the back of the document I saw a note. It was stained by coffee, but the letters were visible. It read, Rules for the night guard at the school. Rules? This is nonsense, I thought to myself. But out of curiosity, I started reading. I got terrified by what was written on the piece of paper. This is a set of rules for the night guard at the school. By no means are you to break one of these rules, or your life will be in danger. As the hours will pass, you will encounter different types of anomalies. Your shift starts at 10pm and ends at 6am. 
Be sure to arrive sooner than ten. The more time you have to prepare, the better. We have also provided you with a gun in case of an emergency. It's also locked in the drawer. Be sure to grab it. Rule 1. Always make sure you are silent while outside the security office. The creatures inside are dormant as long as you don't make any noise above the sound of your footsteps. There are hours where they get active though, so pay attention to the next rules too. Rule 2. Always make sure to lock the door behind you when you get in and out of the security office. Oh, and one more thing. After 2 a.m., the door of the security office will be compromised. Do not go inside, as it will prove to be a dead end. 3. Constantly check the watch we provide you to see the correct hour. Every other watch will be malfunctioning while inside. 4. During 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., start patrolling the school. Nothing will happen during this job if you follow the first rule. But you have to get inside your office before 11. The creatures mentioned before will start to be active, and you don't want to be out there with them. If you can't make it to the security office, hide inside one of the bathrooms and pray they can't find you. 5. Between 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., you have to stay inside of your office, but you need to pay attention to surveillance cameras. You will see the creatures walking around the school looking for prey. If you see them come close to the security office, turn off all electronics from the breaker box and barricade the door. If you don't see them getting near, just carry on with your business. Although, if you turned off the electricity before the breaker box, don't turn it on until the end of your shift, or they will start to hunt you. 6. Between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m., you have to make rounds around the school once again. Pay attention for blood on the floor. If you do see blood, run back to the security office and barricade the door. Something will claw at the door, but it will leave soon if you don't make any noise. After it's gone, continue patrolling. 7. During 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., you need to check the basement. Once you get there, the door behind you will be closed until 4 a.m., if you hear low growls coming from multiple directions, hide wherever you can. If you cannot hide, be prepared to run to the panic room. The path leading to it is marked on the sticky note. 8. Once you enter the basement, the janitor will start following you until the end of your shift. You will intermediately see glimpses of him. Do not let him catch you. If he gets too close, just tap him on the shoulder and say, Not now, my friend. Not now. He will disappear for roughly half an hour, giving you time to gain distance. Notice, though, you can only do this once. 9. After 4 a.m., the creatures inside will start to hunt you. Do your best to evade them until 6 a.m. If you can do that, they will return to being dormant again, and you can safely exit the building. Your shift is over. 10. This will never happen to anybody so this is why I left it to be the last on the list. While you were inside, you could start to hear a storm outside. If that happens, look out the window to see if it's raining blood. If it doesn't, continue following the rules normally. Although, if it is raining blood, you may encounter a pale woman with long dark hair named Max during your shift. Max will appear normal at first. But soon after, she will slowly transform into something horrible and start hunting you until the end of your shift. If that happens, get into the ventilation system and hide there, keeping quiet until the end of your shift. If Max crawls into the vents as well, do your best to evade her as well as you can. Your life is on the line. Don't worry about the janitor or the other creatures. They fear her as well. After your watch shows 6 a.m., she will back away. You can end your shift and exit the school. Good luck. I hope we'll see you alive tomorrow. I could feel my blood run cold in my veins. What did I just read? Is this just a prank to scare the new guy? I started to panic though. What if the rules were real? Could I even survive a shift like this? After calming down for a minute... I thought that maybe I should just take the note seriously, just in case something is really in here with me. 
By the time I was done preparing, the watch was showing 10.15. Crap, I need to get going. I started to walk across the long and dimly lit hallways, checking the classrooms, the bathrooms, everything I could. I could feel the air around me getting heavier with each step, like something was watching me, carefully paying attention to every move I make, thirsty for human blood. I checked the watch and for a moment I froze. 10.55 p.m. I didn't think I had time to get back to security office without sprinting and making a lot of noise. I remembered the fourth rule. During 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., start patrolling the school. Nothing will happen during this job if you follow the first rule, but you have to get inside your office before 11. The creatures mentioned in the first rule will start to be active, and you don't want to be out there with them. If you can't make it to the security office, hide in one of the bathrooms and pray they don't find you. I just broke the rule, but I could still follow the last part. I went to one of the bathrooms and hid in a stall, locking the door behind me. Not long after, I heard painful, long screeches echoing through the halls. So loud, in fact, that I could feel the sound shattering my eardrums. I was horrified, and a cold sweat started to drip down my neck. I have to calm myself down in order not to hyperventilate and attract unwanted attention. I opened my phone and saw that I had no service. What the hell, I thought. There's been signal inside this entire time, right when I started my shift. Now it's gone, and I was there, trapped with those things, all by myself. I didn't have much time to contemplate on the situation, as I've heard something entering the bathroom. It started to crawl around, sniffing for prey. It came in front of my stall and started to scratch the door. I was close to passing out, since I got terrified thinking about what could be on the other side of that door. I knew it sensed something, and it won't leave until it gets me. It started to growl at the door, and that's when I finally passed out. I woke up and surprisingly, it seemed to have disappeared. I checked my watch and it was showing 11.30. I had to make a run for the security office. I slowly exited the stall and then got out of the bathroom. The next thing I did was very stupid. I ran full sprint to the security office and I drew a lot of attention towards me. Soon I was being chased by something, and I started to run at full speed. I could feel it breathing at the back of my feet, and the smell of its putrid scent. I didn't want to turn my head around to see what it looked like. That didn't matter anymore. I quickly got to the security office, storming inside and locking the door behind me. I heard loud growls banging and scratching at the door. I then barricaded the door and turned off the electricity in the building. Just as the rules said, maybe there was still time to follow them. Maybe there was still time to escape alive in this hell pit. Soon after, the sound stopped. I quickly glanced at the surveillance cameras and saw the creatures walking away from the office. They looked terrifying. All of them were black and had some sort of fur on the top of their skin. Their eyes. Oh my god, their eyes were white and translucent and you could see the veins inside of them. And their claws were extremely sharp as they left marks on the floor while they passed. All of them had some sort of fucked up grin on their face, showing their teeth with jagged edges hungry for flesh and blood. I kept watching them on the camera, seeing them move across the hallways, through the classes, looking for prey. Looking for me. I didn't have time to recover, before soon after the watch was showing 12 a.m., I had to get moving. I grabbed the flashlight and walked into the dark abyss, afraid of what I've just witnessed. I knew that my life was in terrible danger and the only way that I was going to survive was to follow those rules written on the note. Chaotic thoughts were rushing through my head. I could see my entire life unfolding right in front of my eyes. I was terrified, because deep inside... I had a feeling that I wasn't going to get out of here, alive. I continued the journey across the endless and dark hallways, checking all the classrooms and bathrooms along the principal's office and the canteen. I was surprised by the fact that I didn't see anything fucked up while I was patrolling. It's like they vanished into thin air after the incident from earlier. But I still kept quiet, as I could feel something was wrong. I wasn't alone in there. 
Something was quietly observing each and every move I was making, waiting to find a moment when I'll be weak and tear at my flesh. As instructed, I was paying attention to the floor to see if there was any blood on it. Nothing, lucky me, I thought. One less demonic thing to worry about. I checked the watch and it was showing, 1.30. In half an hour, I'd have to go check the basement as it was written on the rule set. I slowly made my way near, arriving at the canteen. It was empty, and the thought of having a few moments of peace comforted my mind. I could feel my breath getting easier, and then suddenly a sense of hope emerged deep inside of me. I had to get out alive. I didn't have much time to think though, as my watch was showing 2am now. I have to go down in the basement. I approached the door slowly, and I grabbed the handle to open it. It was rusty, as though nobody had gone down there in years. As I opened the door, I shone my flashlight into the darkness and descended slowly into whatever place which was awaiting me. I grabbed the sticky note from the rule set just to make sure to check the way to the panic room. I'd better be safe than sorry, I thought. As I was walking around into the dark abyss, I quickly noticed that someone was following me. After taking a better look, my heart started to beat faster and I could feel the sense of dread in the air. My legs froze as I could distinguish his appearance. The janitor. I almost forgot about the rule. Once you enter the basement, the janitor will start to follow you until the end of your shift. You will intermediately see glimpses of him. Do not let him catch you. If he gets too close, tap him on the shoulder and say, Not now, my friend. Not now. He will disappear for roughly half an hour, giving you time to gain distance. I pulled myself out of a trance I was in and ran. I didn't know where I was heading, and it honestly didn't matter at that point. The janitor just continued to follow me in a fast pace. Just when I thought that things couldn't get any worse, I started to hear low growling. It was coming from every direction, and it was getting louder as each second passed. I could feel the air around me getting cold, and filled with the foul smell of rotting corpses. I just booked it into the panic room running as fast as I could. As I wasn't paying enough attention to my surroundings, I tripped on something, and my flashlight fell from my right hand. My primal survival instincts kicked in, and I just continued to run as I left the flashlight there on the ground. I didn't even realize that I was close to the panic room until I hit my head on the door. Then in complete darkness, I frantically tried to find the handle to get inside, and I could hear something big crawling towards me. As it was getting closer and closer, I finally got inside the panic room and shut the door behind me. Soon after, though, something was smashing its body on it, trying to get inside. I could hear terrible sounds coming from outside. I don't even know how to describe them rather than they were demonic. It kept going for a while and then it suddenly stopped. I sighed in relief. I got my phone out and turned on my flashlight. As I looked around, I froze. I forgot about the janitor. I felt a cold breath on my neck and tried to remember the rules. That's it, I thought. I remembered. I leaned over and touched him on the shoulder while saying, Not now, my friend. Not now. That's when he let out a loud scream and vanished. I didn't have time to rest, though, as I checked my watch again, and it showed 350. No more than ten minutes and all of the demonic creatures lurking around the school will start to haunt me. I still had the gun from the drawer in the security room, and that gave me a little sense of safety. If I could just stay alive for the last two hours, I would get out of this hell. I could just sit inside the panic room until my shift ends, I thought. Suddenly, I heard the faint sounds of rain coming from outside. This... this can't be. No, it's impossible. I'm just imagining things. My mind was aggressively trying to suppress my fear, but deep down I knew I had to go upstairs and look outside the window. I got out of the shelter I had inside the panic room and made my way upstairs. As I got out of the basement, I could see the terrifying creatures running around, as if they were trying to find a hideout from something. As I looked out one of the windows, I could feel a spine-chilling sensation freezing in place with fear. It was raining blood, and I knew what that meant. It was written in the rules. If this happens, 
Look outside to see if it's raining blood. If it does, you may encounter a pale woman with long dark hair named Max during your shift. Max will appear normal at first, but soon after she will transform into something horrible and start hunting you until the end of your shift. Crap. I'm done for. I tried to make it back to the panic room in the basement, thinking that Max won't find me there. As I was slowly walking back to the entrance at the lower level, a pale woman with long dark hair appeared right in front of me. I had to get inside the vents before she transformed into whatever bloody thing she will. As I ran to one of the classrooms to enter the ventilation system, I heard bone cracking and loud high-pitched shrieks coming from behind. I didn't dare look at what that thing was. I quickly got inside the vents and started to crawl looking for a place to hide. I could hear Max crawling after me, following me as she knew exactly where I was heading. Desperately searching for a hideout, I went inside a tube located on the side of the main crawl space, and I hid there. Then I could hear Max getting closer, her claws scraping the insides of the crawl space. She passed right beside me, and I could get a glimpse of what she looked like. Her limbs are long, with bones protruding from them, and a big sharp claw. Her head is deformed and her teeth elongated to a point, like razors coming out of her mouth. Max rushed through the ventilation system searching for me, and I knew it was only a matter of time before she finds me. I'm trapped inside the narrow crawl space, having nowhere to go. As I'm writing this, I can hear her shrieks and the sounds of her claws scraping the metallic insides of the vents. And she's getting close. I can feel it. <laughs> 